Happy Sabbath, saints. I would like to greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to welcome you into this Sabbath school program uh, that uh, is entitled Prayer. Um, we know that um, as a Christian, it is important for us to have that communication with God time and again. And there's no other way that we can have that communication unless we dedicate our time to prayer. And therefore, this program today is going to talk about prayer. And uh, there are two speakers that are going to address us. Um, we will start with uh, uh, Mrs. Um, uh, Sibanda and followed by uh, Dr. Kladi that will be talking on intercessory prayer. So the sequence of events as far as this program is concerned will be as follows. Um, there will be a special song that will be rendered by Bokhoba, Mr. Bokhoba, Elder Bokhoba from um, Tabane SDA Church, which is the blessed hour of prayer. That is the song that she's going, he's going to play for us. And um, then followed by uh, Sister Sbanda who will be talking about the importance of prayer. And then followed also by Dr. Gladi who will talk about intercessory prayer. And then at the end, we'll have um, Brother Ribawone that will be playing a song. And it also has to do with prayer. And thereafter, I will close with prayer. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Our kind, loving Father, I would like to thank you in a very special way for all the protection that you have given us throughout the whole week up to this present moment. And we thank you, Lord, that you saved us. And we thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, that we should come and worship you on your Sabbath, the day that you set apart for us to worship you. And as we are engaging in this program, we ask for thy presence, that you may lead us, that each and everything that we do, we should do to glorify your name. Now and forevermore we pray. Amen. Sabbath, saints of the living God. My topic for today is entitled, Does God Answer All the Prayers? But before I can delve into that, 
I want us to talk about prayer. What is prayer? I will give you a layman's definition. Right? According to my understanding, prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. It is our direct line with heaven and it allows us to talk to God but also to listen to him. It is likened to a communication between a child and his father. It is very natural for a child to ask his father for any of the things that he requires and the father provides. God hears all our prayers and in one sense he answers all of them although we do not always receive what we ask for. Isaiah 65 verse 24 says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear them. So from this verse, we can actually tell that God hears and answers our prayers. When we ask God for something, the reason, the response will come in one of the three alternatives given below. The first one could be a yes. The second one could be a no. Or the last one, which is a wait. Forgive me for using a cricket scenario to illustrate a certain point here. I want you to imagine yourself sitting at the comfort of your home, watching a cricket match. When two batsmen are running between the wickets on a cricket pitch, they need to coordinate the decisions that they will make. One will shout to the other, yes, that is to say, let us run. Or he will shout, no, which is to say, stay where you are. The last alternative, he will shout, wait, which is to say, Let's wait and see what happens before we decide to run. So from the above example, God certainly hears our prayers and answers all of them accordingly. But we do not always get the things that we ask of him. A certain scholar wrote that God will answer no to a prayer if the things we ask for are either not good in themselves or not good for us and those around us. We need to remember that God sees things from an eternal perspective and that there are certain things we may not understand in this life. So when God answers our prayers, he considers all those circumstances. When God says yes, Right, when you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing that you do? We find our answer in David's prayer, which is recorded in Psalms chapter 17. Start each day by seeking God's presence and finding satisfaction in him. This is the heart of what prayer is all about. It is not just about asking for things. It is about seeking God's face and enjoying the sweet communion with him. This is the context of David's prayer. He cried out to God for help in the face of his enemies. And God heard him and answered his prayer with a positive yes. Scenario number two, when God says no. When God says no to a request, one writer says, if the request is wrong, God's answer will be no. If the timing is wrong, God says, slow down. If you are wrong, God says, grow. But if the request is right and the timing is right and you are right, God will definitely say yes. In Matthew 20, verse 20 to 34, we meet two scenarios where there are two requests that were presented to Jesus. Let us listen to how Jesus responded to the two different scenarios. The first instance is when Zebedee's 
wife came to Jesus with her two sons and asked Jesus to allow his sons to sit one on either side of Jesus. The second instance is found in verse 34, still on the same chapter. Jesus calls the two blind men who were sitting by the roadside. Again, Jesus asks them the question, what do you want me to do for you? Their response was, Lord, we want you to restore our sight. From the two situations I have read about, in the case of the two blind men, Jesus answered them with a yes. He had compassion on them and he restored their sight. So the answer was a big yes. In the case of the mother of Zebedee's sons, the answer was a big no. Why did Jesus say no? Because the request was for self-glory, power, and the promotion of a voice. Let's look at the last answer that God gives when we pray. And that is the waiting period. Unfortunately, throughout our lives, and often on a number of occasions, we find ourselves waiting. It's just one of those unenjoyable truths. Examples of waiting are when a relative is sick and you expect God to heal that person. You pray to God and you ask him for healing, but it looks like God will be taken forever to answer that question. Our second example is our children, maybe our financial breakthroughs, promotion at work, fulfillment of a promise, and many others. Waiting can be extremely difficult and sometimes a painful process. Our example on waiting from the Bible is when Abraham waited for a son that God had promised him. Abraham had to wait for many years before he got the son, an heir that would make him a great nation. He had to believe with faith and have hope where there was no hope. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that one day he would be a father of many nations, as was the promise given to him by God in, Genesis, in the book of Genesis. Can we believe that Abraham waited until he was 100 years before he got a son? The other example we may find in the Bible is when Jacob had to wait for Rachel, the woman that he loved so dearly. He waited for seven years only to be deceived by his father-in-law. He had to wait for another seven years, bringing the total to 14, before, 14 years before he got his son before he got his wife. So my fellow South School members, I hope you will now agree with me that God hears and answers prayers, but the answers differ according to situations. When God says wait, it is not denial, but just a delay. Let us trust him even when the answer is no because he knows what's good and best for us. May we all find blessings from the reading of today. Amen. Morning, Sabbath School attendees. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, something called prayer. I have chosen a portion called intercession. It is very important that we intercede for other people. Intercession is actually supposed to take a huge chunk of our prayer. Because the time is limited, I have divided my session into two, the Old Testament intercession and the New um, Testament intercession. Let us just hit, hit the road by opening the book, our Bibles in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 22 and 23. When we found it, it reads this way. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in 
ceasing to pray for you. Let's just stop there. Someone is talking about committing a sin against God. Which one? Ceasing to pray for people. So in other words, he's introducing to us that when you stop praying for people, it means you are making a sin. You are committing a sin. Now, it's probably and possible a matter of a selfish reasons. Imagine in Exodus 33, Moses is meeting God. And when they are in Mount Sinai, Moses said, God, he said, God, now that we are entering the land of uh, that is flowing milk and honey, I want you to give me mansion. I want you to give me Jeep Cherokee. I want you to give me beautiful children, six of them, beautiful wife, and make them to be prosperous. No, no, no. That's not what Moses is doing. Moses, knowing in his heart that the Israelites in the wilderness, they have been misbehaving to God, he actually interceded for them. Let us just jump to Jeremiah 42, verse 1 to 4. But I'm going to talk of the verse 2 and verse 4. Now, the kings are talking to Jeremiah. They are asking him, please let our petition be acceptable to you and pray for, our, for us to the Lord your God. Listen to what uh, Jeremiah say when he answers. He says, I have heard, indeed, I will pray to the Lord your God, according to your ways. Now, they are introducing the story of my God is your God, your God is my God. People who are in the world there, who do not know anything about God, they, they are also the sons and daughters of God. Our God is their God. Their God is our God. It does not matter whatever that they, they worship. Perhaps they are worshiping something that they do not know. But God is the one who, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who created them in his likeness and in his image. And the same applies to us. Let us look in the book of Daniel chapter 4, I mean chapter 9, verse 14 uh, to 19. But I want you not to, um, um, to look at um, the verse that I'm going to choose. You can read from verse 4 to um, 19, but I just want you to look at the uh, uh, verse 18, where it says, Oh my God, incline your ear and hear, open your eyes and see our desolations in the city, which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplications before you because of our righteous deeds, but because of your great mercies. So Lord have mercy on all of us. He does not choose because they are seven day Adventists, because those ones they do not uh, they are not here. No, the mercy covers all of us. Think about Daniel when he was supposed to pray in this prayer, knowing that when Nebuchadnezzar erected the statue and then all the Israelites bowed down to that particular statue. It's only Ananiah, Azariah, Mishael, and Daniel who never at any point bowed down. Now imagine if he was supposed to ask for himself and the other three guys. So the intercession means a lot. Whenever you intercede for other people, you also benefit. Let us just jump into New Testament. Jesus Christ here in Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32, he says, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. See, even Jesus Christ interceded for his people. It's not only Jesus Christ who interceded for people, but you also look at Jesus Christ in John 17, when he was interceding even for us, who, who came 2,000 years after he died on the cross. Amen. As clear as that. Look at Paul in Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 9. Look at uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse 16. Look at Colossians 1, verse 9. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Here is Paul interceding for people of God. Now, we are Seventh-day Adventists. We have been given message, three angels' message. When we go out there to give this message to them who do not know it, we cannot just go there and go and plant our seeds on a hard rock, on a hard soil. We are supposed to kneel down and ask the tiller of the soil to till the soil. In other words, we are interceding. When he has tilled the soil, we go with our books, our food, going to give those people and also plant the seed on this, the soil that is softer because it has been tilted. Then we come back and we kneel down, we intercede one more time. 
to say, the tiller of the ground, can you please make the rain? And the tiller of the ground makes the rain and it rains. Now the seed that we have planted, surely we shall reap. Why do we reap? We reap because we have prayed for them. But if we never pray for them, chances of us to reap are very slim. In the era of COVID-19, where we see people in the first line, the nurses and the doctors, you know, think about it. If you decide not to pray for them, they get to be infected, they go to be quarantined. And at that time, you have a headache or you start coughing. Not COVID, but when you go to hospital, you find that they are no nurses, they are no doctors. Because why? They got infected because you never prayed for them and they are now on quarantine. Then it means your headache is going to continue until you die. So that's why I'm saying when you intercede, even yourself, you benefit from that intercession that you are doing because you are saving people, they also save you in return. It becomes very important in our Christianity that we pray. Jesus Christ has taught us that we must pray for one another. Therefore, let us pray for one another. We must thank God that he has given us this opportunity to learn about intercession. If not interceding means a sin, then it means all of us are getting ourselves into trouble. We are sitting. After this particular message, we need to see prayer bands being so much increasing in numbers, increasing population, and even increasing in the duty that everybody who is involved in that uh, prayer meeting um, um, is supposed to take their opportunity to do what they are supposed to do. Um, we just want to thank the Lord again um, for for opportunity to have pastors. Those are the people that we need to pray for. Elders, we need to pray for them. Deacons, we need to pray for them. And by so doing, even other people who are of the world, we are able to pray for them. Then when we go home, the time we go home, or oh, even our family members will be here because we are not selfish and therefore we are going to benefit. Let us not see ourselves into trouble and let us not be selfish when we have found God. Let us pray to God for him to tilt the land that when we go and plant the seed, we are supposed to be even expecting after we have interceded that we must reap what we have sown.
Father, we thank you once more for such a privilege of coming before your throne, the throne of grace, asking for forgiveness where we have erred, and asking you, Lord, to bless us, that these words that have been spoken unto us should stay in our hearts, not only to stay, but also to be seen by those that are living around us, that they may see light in us, that we should be able to pray for them, that they should be saved as much as we are saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.